Hi, this is OC Astronomy. This is Oklahoma Christian, and I'm an adjunct astronomy professor, Dave Compton. I'm here today to explain to you the difference between a refracting telescope and a reflecting telescope, and to give you some examples. The refracting telescope was the telescope first invented by Galileo about 450 years ago, and refracting means that it has a lens of glass that bends the light and that bending of the light is called refracting. It bends the light to a focus so that you can have a, uh, a magnified image of something far away. This was first used in spy glasses um, invented by a Dutchman, but Galileo was the first one to turn the spy glass towards the heaven and look at things like the moon, the moons of Jupiter, the phases of Venus, sunspots, and etc. And he was able to show that the heavens were not as perfect as they thought by seeing things like craters on the moon. However, Galileo's design, if you look at the blue light and the red light, the blue light and the red light would be bent at slightly different angles. And so the blue light and the red light would come to focus at a different point. You can call this problem false color. The fancy term is chromatic aberration. But this false color led his critics to say that the moon uh, craters that he saw could also be imperfections because maybe the craters were actually bubbles in the glass. Someone even said the sunspots on the sun, maybe those were just birds in flight because they said, well, if we can't trust the color of what you're showing us, maybe there are other problems with looking through your glass and maybe the heavens really are perfect and only your telescope is imperfect. So later they corrected this problem with something called the crown flint doublet. And that has two glass elements made of crown and flint, uh, different, slightly different types of glass. And what happens is it's able to bend the light that goes through that glass, the red and the blue, to reach a common focal point uh, that's much closer. It's still slightly imperfect, but much, much better. And so they were able to trust what they saw, and this helped counter those counter arguments to looking at the heavens. The problem with doing a crown flint doublet is that you have four glass surfaces that you have to carve exactly correct, and the glass has to be pure of, uh, free of impurities. And so you have to have clear glass, and it has to have four surfaces. That makes this very expensive and uh, also a problem of having two pieces of glass at the front is that when you make them very large, they get very heavy. And having all of that weight out at the front means that you're controlling a weight that's basically at the end of a stick. And if you've ever held a weight on the end of a stick, it gets very heavy and it's hard to control, it's hard to aim and keep it steady, and so it's unstable. And so whenever you get very large, you have that problem. This is an example of a small refracting telescope. It's made by Orion. It's a wonderful little telescope. It has a, a smaller front end, and it shows a very clear image, um, but it is also quite small compared to its bigger brother, which is made with a mirror at the bottom, and it is a reflecting telescope. And for reasons that I'm about to explain, the reflecting telescope is cheaper to produce and so for the same amount of money, if you're going to spend it, you can buy a much larger reflector than a small refractor. A reflecting telescope was invented by Isaac Newton. Uh, this specific design is, is called a Newtonian telescope. And he found out that if you used a mirror to reflect the light instead of a glass to refract the light, that the reflection could be made to focus the color uh, all different wavelengths at the same point. And so you are free from that problem of chromatic aberration or false color. And so the big improvement is now you have two mirror surfaces that uh, you just have a flat one in the middle and a curved one at the back, which are much less expensive to produce. And also the glass of, that you make the mirror out of doesn't have to be pure all the way through. You're only concerned about the surface being uh, perfectly flat or perfectly curved, and so you do not have to have expensive, clear, perfect glass. 
Um, this design is very good. It's very good for amateurs. And uh, this particular one is a very, very nice instrument, but it's for the price, you can buy a larger reflector than a smaller refractor. And they experience this at the professional level as well. At the one good example is the Lick Telescope in California at Mount Hamilton. If you can see, this is an older picture of a, of a man standing at the base of the Lick Telescope. And this entire tube is made of very thick steel and it has a very um, rigid counterweight system and actually was built by a company that made battleships because they were the only company that could bend the steel and weld it like it needed to be done. Because as I explained, the heavy weight on the end of that stick would make an ordinary tube flex. And you can't have a flex between the telescope or you won't be able to focus the light. The disc at the top of this, uh, there are two lenses. It's an achromat refra refracting telescope. And there are two lenses and they're very heavy. They're 36 inches wide um, and 36 inches of glass disc, you know, it's gigantic. And so it's very heavy. And so you have to have this rigid tube uh, in order to make it work. This represented almost about the limit of what they were able to do um, with a refracting telescope. Now, they were able to make a much, much larger reflecting telescope. One example is the Palomar telescope. It's near San Diego. And this telescope, you can see the little man standing by the scaffolding there. This telescope is 200 inches compared to only 36 at Lick. So for the price and for the engineering, you could have a much, much larger glass surface on a reflecting telescope. In fact, when it came to do the Hubble telescope, they chose to do a reflector as well. This is a, uh, a paper model of it, and inside you can kind of see the glass surface is actually uh, the glass surface is actually in the middle, and then there's a secondary mirror here. It sends the image through a hole in the bottom instead of sending it out the side. Um, it's called a catadioptric, but that's another point. But it sends it to the back because the instruments are all located at the back of the telescope, and it's much easier to, to engineer that way than having all the instruments hanging off of the side. And so this is the choice when they, when they had to make the choice for the Hubble telescope, they chose to make it a reflecting telescope for many of those uh, same reasons. Now, that is the basic difference between a refracting telescope that bends the light and a reflecting telescope that uses a mirror to bounce the light back and uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about telescopes today. Thank you.